Hi, Pastor Mike here, wishing you a happy new year. Hope your new year's celebration was joyful and you celebrated the outgoing of 2015 and the incoming of 2016. Your promise, a year of great hope and anticipation, expectation. We're expecting great things this year. I want to just take a minute and talk to you about Sunday and Sunday's message and give you a synopsis so you can be ready and, and give you a challenge. Um, I believe the church is postured at a very critical time right now as we looked at Sunday and part one of our message, we've never been this way before, out of Joshua 3 verse 4, where they're leaving the wilderness and after 40 long, hard, frustrating years, they're coming into the promised land. And so God gives them very clear, very distinct instructions on what to do and how to do it in order to get over Jordan and into the promise. And I believe that's where the church is right now. You know, I believe the church itself has been in a, in a bit of a wandering posture. And it's not to say we haven't seen God's blessing, God's hand. You know, in the wilderness, Israel saw miracles daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner when manna came from heaven. They had clothes that never wore, uh, shoes that never got holes in them. They had water that came out of the rock. They saw God do amazing things, but they were not in the promised land. They were not enjoying the fulfillment of everything God had promised. And I believe that's kind of where the church has been. But we're seeing glimmerings and we're seeing the beginnings of God moving the church into its promise, into a, a new land, a new land of fruitfulness, a new land of effectiveness, a new land of, of, of peace and blessing and fulfillment. And, I, and that's our challenge as, as the children of God to come into the promise and walk in what God has promised us. And so Sunday, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at it from the standpoint of the next step because God laid out their steps for them. You know, many times we kind of, we, we're not intentional. We're not really thinking about our next move. We just do things or we just think, well, this would be a good idea. And we, we just do it, not realizing and keeping our eyes on the goal. You know, to use a sports analogy, for example, when you're playing football and you have the ball, uh, the goal for every play is to score a touchdown. And of course, not every play scores a touchdown, but every play is designed to, to either set you up for the play that will get you there or designed to get you there. And there's no wasted plays. You, you, you have to make the most of, of every uh, situation. And so in, in that analogy, um, your next move, what is it? What is your next step as a believer? What's the next play that, that you feel like you're going to bring into the game in order to get you closer and set you up for the promise, the fulfillment, or to get you there? Because your next move is very important. It's very critical. And, and it's important when you see your situation, that you see it correctly and that you call the right play. Because, you know, if you call the wrong play, you can actually even lose yardage. And you can get further back from where you started out to, to, to get toward. And so I think to use an analogy from last year's Super Bowl, uh, remember when the Seahawks were, were losing to the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 49. And uh, it was 28-24. But Seattle got the ball in the last remaining minutes and marched down the field. And it looked very promising. I mean, there were, it was an amazing march as they moved the ball and strategically and intentionally got down to the two yard line with about 26 seconds left on the, on the clock. And, and they're on this two yard line with the number one running back in the nation. I mean, this, this guy has run over people. He's run around people. He's run through people. He's the number one running back in the NFL. And here you are on the two, I mean, it's the perfect setup. And, and, and basically all you have to do is hand Marshawn the, the ball and walk off the field winners. And, uh, but they called a timeout and, and they, they came up with a pass play. And 
with two seconds, Russell Wilson drops back, throws the ball into the end zone, and it's intercepted. And the man brings the ball out to the two yard line, and the game is over. And Marshawn and Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks, their heads hang down as they walk off the field losers when they had the game in the bag. And I wonder how many of us are like that. When we are set up by God for success, He has set us up for fulfillment. He has set us up to walk in the fullness. And But we, we call the wrong play. We, we do the wrong thing. We, we, we don't follow through with what brought us to the place that we, we are at. And, and, and you say, well, Pastor Mike, what is that? I mean, but think about it. Faith is what brought us here. And there's no trick place here. It's just really walking out your faith and, 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 and living it out in, in, in just this determination that I will not be denied this victory, this win, this touchdown, if you will. And so here we are, we're positioned in 2016. What's your next step? What is your next move? What are you going to do? Our New Year's resolution isn't the answer. These promises we make to lose a few pounds, to be a better person, to be a little nicer, to be a little more patient, they last about as long as the next cake that passes by or the next uh, frustration that comes our way. God is not looking for resolutions. He's looking for transformation. And, and Paul said in Romans 12 too, this transformation comes by a renewed mind. We renew our mind, we get our minds right, and we get our minds focused, and we get our hearts fixed, and by faith we walk this out. And then we see God show up in our lives. And he confirms his word. He confirms his promise. He, he, he shows us his mighty power as we walk by faith and not by sight. And I think it's the church's finest hour right now. But many of us are Matter of fact, many of us aren't even in the game. You know, the fact that we go to church doesn't mean we're in the game. Many people go to church, but they're not in the game. They're not involved. They're not actively pursuing the will and the purpose of God. They're not even serving. They're not even living this out in a practical way where they're watching God use them and watching God teach them and leading them as they lay their lives down for the gospel. I want to encourage you that your next step is so important. That's why on January 4th, we're starting 21 days of prayer and fasting. Every morning at nine o'clock, we're going to be in the annex praying, seeking God on Monday through Saturday. On Sundays at eight o'clock in the annex, praying and seeking God. Because I believe as we pray and fast, that God is going to speak to us about our next step and about the next play that, that, that sets us up for a score, that sets us up for victory. Folks, we have to admit I, we don't have the answers and there's no trick play here. It's just simply grit it out and walk it out and, and, and live it out. And so I wanna encourage you to be a part of that. And even if you can't be here physically, to join with us for 21 days as we set aside this time to pray and seek God. Read a good book on fasting. Read a good book on prayer. Do something this year to start this year off that will, will challenge you and, 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 and bring you alive to these realities. And then Sunday, we start the growth track. Uh, the growth track is a four Sunday commitment that takes you through the, each step that will take you from what it means just to be a believer, to all the way through to finding your purpose and making a difference by serving in the body of Christ and, and finding your gift and finding your calling and finding a place that you can plug in and let God use you. This is the next step. This is how you get in the game. It's time to shake off all of the, all of the past and all of the hurts and all of the mess and all of the lethargy and everything that has kept you out of the game. It's time to get in and let's get on with this and watch God's team win. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Thank you for this time. God bless you. And we appreciate you so much. And we'll see you Sunday.